So a chemical system is at equilibrium when the forward reaction occurs at the same rate, at the same speed as the reverse reaction. So what is a rate of a chemical reaction? Well, it's like a rate of travel. It's how fast something is going, how fast the reaction proceeds. So you can measure that as the amount of reactant that gets changed into product in a given period of time. Reaction rates can be controlled if we understand what influences them. So we need to talk about collision theory. Collision theory says that chemical reactions occur through collisions between atoms and molecules. So if we've got this reaction of hydrogen and iodine to form hydrogen iodide, this reaction occurs when a hydrogen ion, I'm sorry, hydrogen molecule and an iodine molecule run into each other. So they have to run into each other. The collision also has to have enough energy for the reaction to proceed. These are both molecules. Those two hydrogen atoms are bonded together. In order for them to react, you have to break that bond. That requires energy. These, what is up with this pointer? Those two iodine atoms are bonded together. In order for them to react, you have to break the bond. So for the reaction to occur, these can't just gently bump into each other. They have to smash into each other with enough energy that the existing bonds are broken so that the new bonds can form. So collision energy is related to particle velocity because kinetic energy is the mass times the velocity squared, right? one half mv squared. So the faster they're moving, the more energy they have. In the gas phase, which is a lot easier to think about for this, um, gas phase molecules are going to have a wide distribution of velocities. The temperature gives us a measure of the average kinetic energy, but some are high and some are low. So even if the overall kinetic energy is low, some of them will be higher. And so you can have high energy collisions. The high energy collisions lead to products, the low energy collisions do not. It's a little bit like um, you know, meeting somebody, right? If you think of the chemical reaction being that you get involved in a relationship. Um, so in order to be in a relationship with someone, you have to know that they exist, right? You have to meet them. If not in person, at least FaceTime or something, you have to meet them somehow, right? Or you can't have a relationship. You can't have a chemical reaction unless those things get together. How they get together matters, though, as well, right? If you meet somebody and the circumstances are bad and you have a very negative experience, you're probably not going to fall in love with them. Whereas if you met under different circumstances, you know, romance could happen. Um, most chemical reactions have an activation energy. This is some sort of an energy barrier that we have to overcome. A lot of times this may be the energy needed to break existing bonds. Um, so the factors that influence the rate of the reaction are the same factors that influence the number of high-energy collisions. More high-energy collisions, more reaction, faster reaction. Uh, the rate of a reaction usually increases when you increase the concentration of the particles. So here we have three different situations, low initial concentration, medium, and high. Well, which of these is going to have just plain more collisions? This one. It's like, you know, if you want to meet somebody, do you go to Wyoming, where there's hardly any people? Or do you go to a big city in a crowded area where there's lots of people? You're more likely to meet, you're meet lots of people if you stand around in Times Square, New York, right? If you go stand in a field in Wyoming, you might not meet anybody. Stand there for days and not see a single person. So the more molecules there are in a, say, in a small area, the more concentrated they are, the more collisions there are. And you have to have more collisions to have more reaction. Some of those collisions will be high enough energy, some won't. But if you have more collisions, you'll have more high energy collisions.
temperature has a factor in this as well. Um, when you increase the temperature, now the particles are moving faster. So you're going to get more collisions, because if you think about here, we've got you know, a number of people in a room, and they're strolling around. Or here, we've got a number of people in a room, and they're running around. I think of you know, kindergartners, because grown-ups don't run around in crowded rooms, but kindergartners do. They're going to run into each other, right? So you're going to have more collisions. And because they're moving faster, the collisions are going to have a higher energy. And so the reaction rate will increase. So increase the concentration, increase the temperature. So increase the temperature, increase the concentration, increase the temperature. Reaction rates um, do not remain constant. They generally decrease as the reaction proceeds. Because what happens to the concentration of the reactants as the reaction occurs? The concentration goes down. It's like if you had a big, big room and you were doing that speed dating thing or something, right? Initially, you've got lots of single people looking to make connections. But as the night goes on and people hook up with each other, there's fewer and fewer people left to interact, and so you're going to have fewer collisions that are affected, fewer relationships. Does that make sense? Okay, so we should be able to think about something like this. In a chemical reaction between two gases, you would expect that increasing the pressure of the gases would do what? Increase, decrease, or not affect the reaction rate. So think about a gas. You've got the particles just zinging around. And if you increase the pressure, how would you do that? Well, you could put more gas in there, or you could make the container smaller. What's that going to do to the collisions between the particles? They're going to run into each other more often. Is that going to cause the rate to increase? Yeah. So increasing the pressure would cause the rate to increase because you're going to get more collisions. More collisions, more reaction.